now let's let's use one um, tool called as you know a cisco packet tracer just to demonstrate this particular uh, concept a bit so let me use that particular tool just give me a second <clears throat> You can just download this. I mean, um, you can easily go and uh, you know download this particular tool. <clears throat> right? You can click on download for free, and you can get started. That's okay. All right. So <clears throat> this is how the tool now normally it will look like. So you have a lot of devices on the on the left hand side. You can see if you click on you know uh, on the left hand side is network devices. You get you know um, devices like routers, you know switches, located to my cursors, so hubs, um, some wireless devices, security devices like firewalls, right? Some WAN, WAN emulation devices, etc. So you have end devices like you know uh, PCs, you know. Uh, uh, servers, printers, IP phones, etc. Right? You can have uh, devices like you know some sort of boards, actuators, sensors, right? Cable, different types of cable that you have it might be serial cable, a console cable, a copper straight through, a copper crossover, fiber optics, you know, IP phone, phone cables, serial cables, octal cables, USB cables, etc. All right. So different types of you know. Uh, emulator that you can get over here. So what I'm doing is right now is very simple. I'll select on end device. You know, let me take a couple of PCs over here on the main page, right? And what I can do is um, I can I can connect that. So normally two PCs when you connect, uh, it will be you know of course uh, uh, a straight through sorry a crossover cable, right? So you'll take a copper crossover. So select this icon and say copper crossover. Select that. Click on the PC and you have got different types of ports that is available on this PC. So you'll select this Ethernet port, fast Ethernet port, which means it is offering you, you know, uh, 100 Mbps. So if it is only Ethernet, it means 10 Mbps. If it is fast Ethernet, it means it will offer you 100 Mbps. If it is gigabit Ethernet, it means it will offer you, you know, 1 Gbps and so and so, right? So it is, click on that FE port uh, that is basically your NIC adapter and click on this PC again and plug it to this is the net port again over here, right? And then you can see the port labelings will appear. So it shows you that, you know, this PC is plugged to the other PC and this is the interfaces that they're connected with. All right, so now what I can do is I can I can go to click on this particular PC, right? I can click on uh, desktop over here, okay? And then I can click on IP configuration and I can see that to a PC I can give, you know, um, you know, either there are two ways to assign an IP address. I can go and assign an IP address statically to my PC, or I can go with something called as DHCP, that is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So basically, I can have something called as uh, the DHCP server by which my PC can get an IP address automatically. Okay, this is a different concept. So let me use you know static itself, where I'm assigning the IP address manually to my PC. So let me go and assign an IP address as, for example, 10.1.1.1. Say the mask when I click, it automatically knows that this IP will have a default mask of 55000. You can change the mask values based on your requirement. That will be part of your subnetting class. So once I do subnetting, then you will understand. Uh, you know, if I change it, what will happen? As of now, default gateway is not required. So default gateway is required if you're trying to reach to a different network. Okay, DNS server is also not required right now. At this point of time, we're not going for an IPv6 configuration. Right, it's not required. So. Just a normal IP and a mask you gave, that's it. Okay, click on close. Okay, click on close over here. All right, and then you can go to command prompt. Okay, there's this particular option. And if you want to expand, you can expand in that way. If you just type IP config, you can see what IP address this PC has. So this PC has got an IP of 10.1.1.1 and the mask is 255.0.0.0. They are assigned right now. Okay, uh, that's it. So if we go to another PC, click on that. Um, the PC is powered on, so you can see it's powered on over here. Click on desktop, click on IP configuration, and give the IP as 10.1.1.2. 
the mask is by default is this. I do not want any default gateway or DNS to go for time being. Okay, keep it simple. Close, go to command prompt, type IP config. You can see that this PC has got an IP address of 10.1.1.2, which looks like that. If you want to see the MAC address, it is like IP config space slash all. This will give the MAC address of the PC as well. Right? <clears throat> So you can see this is the MAC address of the PC as D98B for PC number, you know, two over here. Okay, and for PC number this, if I go back again, and if I type the command IP config space slash all, I can see the MAC address as C3, C3D4. Okay, if I want to see the local ARP cache. I can see with the command call is ARP space minus A. So I'm on the first PC and I'm typing ARP space minus A to see my local ARP cache. As of now, communication didn't happen, so it is not going to, you know, locate you anything. So now what will happen is in the command prompt, you know, if I try to ping, you know, 10.1.1.2, you can see that I'm getting an echo reply from 10.1.1.2, right? It's a 32 byte, you know, packet. Uh, this is your basically average time of your echo request to go and reply to come. The TTL stands for time to leave, right? Which I'll discuss later in CCNA classes and all. You will understand more about this TTL functionalities. But as of now, it's fine. Okay. So you can see that, I mean, uh, the number of packets that you have sent is four. You received four packets. There was no packet loss, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But sometimes what happens is uh, when you ping for the very first time, it's a, it's a, it's a similar environment, right? Uh, when you ping really for, for the very, very first time. So what happens is, you know, if the destination MAC is not known, uh, then the PC will do an ARP to find out the destination MAC, okay? Uh, because of which, you know, the ICMP packet will be, um, the first packet is lost. So generally what I'm doing is, I'm generating here four packets, right? And each and every ICM packet has got a, you know, a, a, a time limit of two seconds, right? So every packet is generated after every two seconds. So it might be you generate the first packet and within two seconds, uh, you have not got the ARP reply. So your first packet is lost. Okay, and the second packet you got the ARP reply. So, so from second packet your replies would be, uh, you know, seen. So out of four packets, you know, might be one packet was lost because ARP was not done by by that time, and you got the reply of the remaining three packets. Right. So this thing can happen. So if I look again to ARP space minus A, you can see that you know you found out the remote IP over here, and this is the remote MAC address that you have learned. Okay. All right. Um, so your pings are successful over here. Right, but if I actually change, you know, this IP to something else, say I make it you know, twenty dot one dot one dot one something different IP, okay, that's fine. And if I go to command prompt now and show you that the IP has been changed to a different network altogether, so if I see IP config, all right, the IP address has, has, has been changed to a different network altogether. So now if I try to ping, if I go to <clears throat> the first PC and try to ping, you know, twenty one 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 that will not be happening at all, right? Because this PC does not know how to reach it, right? Does not know how to reach to a different network. Okay, so you get the replies as, you know, request timed out, all right? So <clears throat> let me go back and assign it back to your, you know, the normal condition that it was. So say I revert it back to 10.1.1.2. You know, with the mask, go back to command prompt, IP config, and it is back to 10.1.1.2 again. Okay, now from PC, or from this PC only, let us say if I try to ping back to the you know, PC one, so it is 10.1.1.1 over there, I can see I'm getting a reply. All good. <clears throat> All right, so. <clears throat> okay so you can see i mean you can also uh check with this particular you know there is a data that you can see that that i've taken this you know data basically this is an you know this is an icmp packet data so if you don't want to go to your you know in packet tracer this is a beautiful thing that you can get uh it's like not going to the command prompt and pinging to the destination pcs you can select a uh, you know ICMP traffic from here directly, click on this source, click on this destination, and you can see what is the status over here. It says, okay, 
the status is successful. It's an ICMP packet. The source was PC0, destination was PC1, and it was happening all good. Right. <clears throat> Okay, so you know, you know, what is the basic stuff over there, right? So we'll actually um, use, you can, you guys can use, you know, packet tracer to practice it, uh, your, your routing, your basic switching or this particular course itself. But uh, I'll be using, you know, a couple of them. I'll be using EVNG to show you some routing and switching demonstrations, plus also packet tracer. Uh, so you have the gist of, you know, both the, both the environment. So, I mean, packet tracer is something uh, I would recommend at this stage. It's, it's uh, more than enough for you guys to practice and to, you know, work with. <clears throat> 